Rudolf Hurst, the Commandant of Auschwitz, is remembered today as one of the most evil war criminals and Nazis of the Second World War. He was a man who would brazenly at the Nuremberg trials admit that he was involved in the slaughter of millions, and he would also seemingly be proud of his actions in building the deadliest concentration camp of the war. He was a man who tried to hide out at the end of the conflict, and was trying to evade capture in the hope of rebuilding his life in a post-war Germany. But this was not the case, and at the age of 45, Rudolf Hurst was executed, but his death sentence and execution was incredibly unique, and it was one of only a few of war criminals that occurred at the very same place that he would work and inflict such pain and suffering. Join us today as we look at the special death sentence of the Commandant of Auschwitz, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Rudolf Hurst was a man who would build Auschwitz into becoming the largest killing centre of the Second World War. He would state, I commanded Auschwitz until the 1st of December 1943, and estimate that at least 2.5 million victims were executed and exterminated there by gassing and burning, and at least another half million succumbed to starvation and disease, making a total of about 3 million dead. This figure represents about 70-80% of all persons sent to Auschwitz as prisoners, the remainder having been selected and used for slave labour in the concentration camp industries. Including among the executed and burned were approximately 20,000 Russian prisoners of war, who were delivered to Auschwitz in Wehrmacht transports operated by regular Wehrmacht officers and men. The remainder of the total number of victims included about 100,000 German Jews and great numbers of citizens, mostly Jewish from the Netherlands, France, Belgium, Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Greece or other countries. We executed around 400,000 Hungarian Jews alone at Auschwitz in the summer of 1944. Hearst would also be responsible for the individual evil of the guards who worked at the camp, but at the end of the Second World War he was hiding out under the name Franz Lang and was posing as a gardener in Gothrupel. His family managed to fall into the hands of the Allies, and Hedvig, his wife, was interrogated, and after some time she gave over the pivotal information about the whereabouts of her husband. He was approached by Hans Alexander and a group of British soldiers, who ordered the gardener to take off his wedding ring. When Hurst refused, he was threatened. Engraved inside of the ring was his name, along with his wife's inscribed, and then, after this, the soldiers began to beat Hurst with axe handles. Many of the men who were Jews wanted to get their own back, but they were then ordered away, and Hurst would be left to rot in custody, before plans were drawn up as to what to do with him. He was state of his time at the hands of the British. During the first interrogation they beat me to obtain evidence. I do not know what was in the transcript, or what I said, even though I signed it, because they gave me liquor and beat me with a whip. It was too much for me to bear. The whip was my own. By chance it found its way into my wife's luggage, my horse had hardly ever been touched by it, much less the prisoners. Somehow one of the interrogators probably thought I'd used it to constantly whip the prisoners. After a few days I was taken to Minden on the Visa River, which was the main interrogation centre in the British zone. There they treated me even more roughly, especially the first British prosecutor, who was a major. The conditions in the jail reflected the attitudes of the first prosecutor, compared to where I'd been before, imprisonment with the International Military Tribunal, was like staying in a health spa. But Hearst would then be brought to trial between the 11th and 29th of March 1947, and during his trial many witnesses came forward about the actions and incidents that occurred inside of Auschwitz. It was clear what would happen to Hearst, and that he would be sentenced to death. However, his death sentence was one which was rather unique, and was a very different one. At the end of the Second World War, many war criminals who were condemned were executed inside of Allied prisons, such as Landsberg Prison or Hamlin Prison. At Landsberg, those who were sentenced to death inside of the American courts would be taken into the courtyard, where they would be accompanied by a priest and also military policemen. They would then be led up the stairs of the gallows and would be handed over to the executioner. In Hamlin, there were simultaneous gallows that would be operated by British executioner Albert Pierpoint, but these executions would not be performed in public. They would go ahead inside execution chambers, within the prisons, and there would be very few witnesses who saw the proceedings. Before his execution, Rudolf Hurst would acknowledge his crimes and would say, My conscience compels me to make the following declaration. In the solitude of my prison cell, I have come to bitter recognition that I have sinned gravely against humanity. 
As Commandant of Auschwitz, I was responsible for carrying out part of the cruel plans of the Third Reich for human destruction. In so doing, I have inflicted terrible wounds on humanity. I caused unspeakable suffering for the Polish people in particular. I am to pay for this with my life. May the Lord God forgive one day what I have done. I ask the Polish people for forgiveness. In Polish prisons I experienced for the first time what human kindness is. Despite all that has happened, I have experienced humane treatment, which I could never have expected, and which has deeply shamed me. May the facts which are now coming out about the horrific crimes against humanity make the repetition of such cruel acts impossible for all time. Hearst would also return to the Catholic Church beforehand. But Rudolf Hearst, the Commandant of Auschwitz, would be executed inside of his own concentration camp. The only other person who was condemned in this way, and who was a Nazi, was Karl Otto Koch, the former commandant of Buchenwald, who was executed by his own former colleagues, as he had been found guilty of stealing and embezzling money from the Nazis and Hitler. But Hearst's death sentence originally wasn't planned to take place inside of the camp of Auschwitz, as he would have been executed inside of a Polish prison, such as Montelupich prison, where there were just hooks in the ceilings of the execution chambers, with nooses attached to them. But what would happen was incredible, as many former prisoners of Auschwitz and those who had been imprisoned within the camp would lobby the Polish courts and the judges. They wanted the former commandant to be executed inside his own camp, and the judges listened to the demands, and they would then organise the execution of Rudolf Hearst to take place within the barbed wire fences of Auschwitz. They would order that the gallows would be created inside of the camp, and this would be a special execution structure where Hearst would be condemned upon, and only one execution would ever take place on it. Today this gallows is marked by a sign that says, this is where the Camp Gestapo was located. Prisoners suspected of involvement in the camp's underground resistance movement, or of preparing to escape were interrogated here. Many prisoners died as a result of being beaten or tortured. The first commandant of Auschwitz, SS Obersturmbahn Führer Rudolf Hearst, who was tried and sentenced to death after the war by the Polish Supreme National Tribunal, was hanged here on the 16th of April 1947. Hearst was brought to his former camp on the 16th of April 1947, and he was led into his former office, where he had a cup of coffee. Following this, he was led towards a gallows structure, where his legs and arms were secured, and then an executioner who was hooded led him up to the stairs of the scaffold. He then helped Hearst up a step, and then, after this, secured the noose around the neck, before the trapdoor was released, and Hearst crashed through. The death sentence of Rudolf Hearst was shocking, because of the fact he was executed inside of the camp that he oversaw for a long time. It was a place where over one million people were killed, and Hearst was the final person to be executed at the site. Around a hundred witnesses, made up of former prisoners and members of the Polish government, saw him hang on the gallows but he was one of only two commandants of concentration camps who would meet their maker and who were condemned within their own camp. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.